Hey YouTube, this is Jimmy with To The Top Crane. Uh, today's Monday, February 5th. Got a little bit of snow over the weekend. Um, I'm going to try to answer some questions that I've gotten uh, just off of the few videos I've gotten posted. Uh, one of them is the controls in the upper cab. I'm going to make another video I've already covered like with some of the screens, the information on some of the screens, but I forgot to cover the actual controls. So uh, on the left side, we have this joystick. This joystick controls swing. If we move it one way or the other, move right, swings right, move left, swings left. Um, on the top here, we've got swing brake switch. So what that does is it locks the swing brake. Um, if you're just sitting still, not doing anything, you snap that over and locks it in place. Um, also what this joystick does, is it controls extend or the second winch so there is the switch up here on this control panel right here and that activates or deactivates the second winch so if I want to run my second winch for something whether I'm staying in the tank up or um, have the jib on with one part of line, which right there is one part of line. If I have two parts, there'd be two cable falls coming down right there, and I'd have to use the block. Um, when I'm putting counterweights on, I use four parts of line. So it goes back to our basic science class. Every time you run that one cable through a pulley and go back up, then it halves the speed so it cuts the speed in half but it doubles the strength or the line pull so this crane has a line pull of 16,750 pounds with a single line so every time I run that cable up and then if I bring it back down that would be three parts a line if I take it back up to the top would be four so on and so on so um, I can do that on the main which is the main winch that I run with the right joystick and then I could have the second winch on the left joystick uh, with single part of line so hopefully that didn't confuse anybody I, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it accurately but um, I'm sure you'll see some pics in our videos at some point in the future where I'm using both both winches so I'll explain it in more detail then so anyway that's what the left joystick does it extends and swings right now in the configuration that I've got it in. Swing brake switch. It's also a swing brake pedal down here. So I can have this switch deactivated where it's in free swing. So now even if the wind blows hard, it can swing me one way or the other. Um, I can stop that by pushing on this pedal down here on the floor on the left side. Pedal on the right side, throttle. And then the right hand stick. <coughs> It controls boom up and down so if I pull it to the left the crane booms up and you might not be able to see it uh, yeah I'm moving up really slow anyway you can, you can see it on my boom angle which is right there you can see it's booming up slow If I move the stick to the right, it booms down. If I move the stick forward, it cables down. So you can see the pills going up and down. Pull it back, cables up. Uh, the clicking, I got a question on the clicking and I explained it in one of our other videos. Uh, that's an indicator to let me know that the winch is actually spinning. So I'll turn my camera on here that's on the back of the crane where you can see the winch. And if you watch, when the winch starts turning, you'll start hearing that clicking. The faster the winch turns, the faster it clicks. I know they try to set it where it's one click per quarter inch or one click per half an inch. It's 
it's not entirely accurate. It's a good indicator, especially if you've got a lot of boom out or if you're working in the blind. And if you didn't have that camera on the winch, that thing's kind of a lifesaver to let you know that you're actually making something happen. Uh, a lot of times we do some pretty precision stuff where you need to move, st move something fractions of an inch. So it's nice to know when your winch is moving uh, just ever so slightly. Another question I've gotten is how does the boom extend and retract the sections? And it's actually, I'm, I'm going to record some of that. It, it's like watching paint dry. It's slow. It's terribly slow. Um, probably really boring to a lot of people. But it is an in integral part of how this machine operates. This machine has a, a, a pinning boom is what they call it. So it's got one extend cylinder in it and five sections of boom that extend. So in order for that one extend cylinder to operate all five sections, it has to do them one at a time. So if I select a boom mode and I'll uh, go in here, we'll bring up our screen. These are the different boom modes that I can use, various boom lengths. And this is the percentage of that length of section that it's gonna put out. So the mode we're gonna use today we're going to go into boom mode 7, so that's 128.9 feet of boom. It'll actually, on this screen, it'll show 129 feet. It's going to put section 5, 4, and 3 at 93% length, and then it's going to leave section 2 and 1 completely retracted inside the base section. So I'm going to record that, and hopefully you can get an idea of what it's doing. I'll, I'll try to narrate a little bit of what it's doing as it's doing it so uh, maybe everybody can understand how it operates. So that's the section I want to use. I want to select it. Now the other screen's going to pop up. The blue outline is the configuration it will be in when it gets everything out to what I've selected. So right now it's at 43.3 feet in length. What we're going to is 128.9 feet section 5 at 93 percent, section 4 at 93 percent, section 3 at 93 percent. So now in order to get it to do that, I need to cable down a little bit so I don't, so I don't run my bill into the top anti-two block weight up there, which that's a switch that if, uh, if that pill hits that weight that's hanging, I can, hell, I'll, I'll just show you. So what that does, is it keeps you from crashing that into the end of the boom and tearing everything up and breaking the cable. So that stops the winch. It actually stops from it stops it from telescoping. It sounds a horrible alarm inside. And it also stops you from booming down. So we'll run this back down. Get it pretty close to the deck because I'm going to have one hand tied up with the camera. So right there, it's about a quarter inch off the deck of the crane. And I'm going to push my left stick forward. I'm going to stand on the throttle because it likes to do everything full throttle when you're extending or retracting. Uh, if you don't, it gets mad at you and it'll actually sometimes can put it into a fall. So I'm standing on the throttle. I push the left stick forward. Right now, what it is doing is unpinning the smallest section from section number two at the bottom. It was pinned at the bottom. And the cylinder, the extend cylinder, is pinned into the bottom of this section. So now it's extending it out. And I apologize, this is a slow process. I, I can actually run it in high speed. There's a button on the front of the joystick that runs whatever particular function that you're operating at the time and puts it into high speed mode. But I generally don't extend and retract this boom in high speed unless there's lightning or wind or if, if I just got to get it out of the air in a hurry. I especially don't do it when it's cold. That grease on the boom is cold. It's cold on those wear pads. Everything's kind of sticky. Um, in my opinion, I think it would just be hard on stuff. Tadano would probably tell me, hey, you can do whatever you want with it. We've engineered it to do that. That's fine. I'm not going to do it with our crane. Okay, so right now it's running that 
section out. And it is currently at 92%. There it just went to 93%. It actually goes a little past 93. And the reason why it does that, and I'll stop right there for just a second. The reason why it does that is there's two pins, one on each side of that section, that have to pin that section in place into the next section below it. So what it has done, it has just locked that section into the next section below it. On the clarion screen down here, this number here shows my telescope cylinder length and then it actually shows a graphic of the telescope cylinder right here. So right now the telescope cylinder is extended all the way and it shows that it's still pinned into that section. Here in a minute it's going to release those pins. You'll see that graphic change. It went to yellow right there in the middle and then they disappeared. So now that section is locked in to the section below it. The extend cylinder is retracting. You can see by that number. And you can actually see it on the graphic that that extend cylinder is retracting. And right now if you look up, I'm trying to pan slow, that way it doesn't make anybody dizzy. If you look up, nothing's happening. Or it looks like nothing's happening. When in all actuality, there's a lot going on inside the boom. The extend cylinder is completely retracting again. And it's almost down to the bottom. You can see on the graphic that it's almost back at the bottom. And you'll see the pins on the graphic extend and they'll lock into the next section. Okay, so the pins are extended into the next section. Now they're locked, and it's going to start extending the extend cylinder, and both sections at the same time. So it's, that, that the first section, the initial one that we first ran out, I can't do anything with it anymore. It's, it's past the range of the extend cylinder. Um, it's just along for the ride because it's physically pinned into the next section below it. So I had to cable down to give myself a little bit of room so I didn't activate that two anti two block switch again. Okay, so now this section's going out, and in doing so, it's pushing both of them out. And it just keeps repeating this process until it gets everything out that you've asked for it to put out. If I was running all 197 feet out, it would have ran the first section out to 100% and then pinned it into the next section. And then it would have ran the next section out to 100% and pinned it into the next section below it. Now, it does the exact same thing in reverse order when you retract. So I, I don't know any other way to explain how it does what it does other than uh, just show on the on the computer screens and show what the boom's doing in relationship to the screens um, but just like it did initially the section number four is at 94 now it's back to 93 it just pinned it or it's in the process of pinning it to the next section below it and then the cylinder is going to retract again retracting and once it gets back to the bottom it's going to grab section number three and extend it and since number four and five five being the smallest section the furthest most section four being the next one and three and two and one and so on um, since four and five are pinned together and then four is pinned to three that extend cylinder when it grabs the next section is going to push those out as well. It's almost there so I'll go ahead and keep recording and at the end
minute of it, you'll hear a little beep and it flashes up an OK symbol on the screen. It lets me know that it's done everything correctly, just like I asked it to, and that it's ready to operate. So I know this is going to be a fairly lengthy video, and for that I apologize, but it's kind of a slow process. But I wanted to get it in here because I, I've gotten that question a few times, and it, it's really hard to explain it to someone. Like if, if someone commented and said, hey, how does it do that? I'd have to rip out a section of the operator's manual, take a picture of it, and upload it. It's the only way that I can explain it. It's easier just to show you. that I asked it to go to. I've got 128.9 feet and actually on this screen it shows 129 so it rounded up. 128.9 feet. 5, 4, and 3 are pinned at 93%. 2 and 1 are still retracted in the base section of the boom. So hopefully uh, that explains how the boom operates, how it actually uh, goes out to the length that I ask it to go to. How I choose that length is determined by the job. Every job requires a different length boom or a different boom configuration. Um, I get that information out of that stack of books right there, that stack of papers right there. That's the load charts for the screens. Anyway, I'll sign off for a little while. Um, looks like they're gonna be a little slow getting going here. I don't know how to edit this video and make it any shorter, so it's just gonna have to be a long one. I apologize, you can fast forward if you wanna fast forward through it, but um, that's something, like I said, that's the only way I knew how to explain how the boom gets in the length or the configuration that I want it.